This is Viv here. In the previous video, we made our recycler view with 100 dummy items inside. In this video, let's query the database and put the real drops that we have in the Realm database. The complete course is available if you type SlideNerd Udemy on Google. Open the first link and you will find all my courses right here. Before you run away, let me show you a neat little trick that you can use to get a nice coupon on this course. Click the first course over here and notice this option that says redeem a coupon. In addition to the discount that Udemy already gives you, you can just select this, enter the word slide nerd over here and click apply for the coupon code. And once you do that, notice that the price immediately falls off. All you have to do is click take this course, login, complete the payment gateway and you're good to watch the complete series which is one of the best series right now on Udemy. First, I would like to talk about the view recycling process by illustrating it. So let's go to our adapter drops class here and I'm going to add log statements at two places. One of them would be the on create view holder. The other one would be the on bind view holder. Now adding a log statement is very simple. Just go there and write log D, hit a tab and you should have this log statement. Now tag obviously doesn't exist. We have to create it which I have done here at the top inside the adapter by calling it WIVS. Go to the on bind view holder and again hit log D and hit a tab. This time I would also like to hit the position in the output so that we guys can see exactly which position is being called with the on bind view holder. So let's go back and run the app. So there is the app running and notice that on create view holder and on bind view holder are called one after the other with the position of the on bind view holder going from zero all the way up to eight, which means there are nine items on the screen. Now observe the log cat as I start scrolling here in the recycler view. I go one step down and take a look at that. There is item 10 and there is on create view holder for that being called as well. I go further down, there is on create view holder, bind view holder. Notice that on create view holder is not being called anymore. On bind view holder is the one that is being called and that is because of view recycling. Initially in the on create view holder, we were creating views every time. If you take a look at the code here, which you can roughly see if I scroll down a bit, you would notice that every time we say inflator dot inflate, we get a new view object for that particular row in the recycler view from XML. Now there is a new drop holder being created here and this holder is being returned. Now as you start scrolling, the items at the top go out of the screen and what your recycler view does is instead of destroying those view objects, it simply removes the data from the top of them and passes the same object to the bottom which gets filled with new data which is why view recycling works. Take a look at that. I start scrolling. There is no sign of on create view holder being called anymore. I can go all the way down to 100 and I can start scrolling up and there is only on bind view holder that is continuously called till we reach position zero. If you take a look at our screen, which was capable of displaying nine items at a time, on create view holder was roughly called a little more times than that. In simple words, we just created around 12 objects, I believe, and we were able to display 100 items by creating 11 or 12 objects. So that is the magic of the recycler view. Now this effect obviously is not achieved with the help of a linear layout if you put items inside that. We can take an even closer look at what items are present on the screen if we switch to the Android monitor. Let me show you what that means. You go simply at the top here, tools, Android, and you start something called the Android device monitor over here. So once it's up, you can go to this tab here on the left hand side that says devices. Just click on that and this will show you your emulator which is Samsung Galaxy S5 currently over here. Out of that, our app is over here which is bucket drops. Select that. Notice this option that says dump view hierarchy for UI automator. This will simply expose what views are present on the screen currently. So if you click on that, it says operation in progress, obtaining a screenshot. And take a look at this. We have all the items on the screen as per the screenshot. So starting right here, as I hover my mouse on each item, it will tell me exactly what this is. For example, this, it says is a text view on the right hand side. If I go here, it says it's a view over here. Then I go further up, it says it's a linear layout. 
Notice that I select the first item, it says it's a linear layout. Notice the linear layout is actually placed inside the recycler view. So the idea was simply like this. We had a recycler view, we made an XML file with the linear layout as the root and what the recycler view is basically doing is putting that linear layout everywhere. So if I go to item 2, there is another linear layout, 3, another linear layout and so on. Now inside a linear layout, if you select item 2, notice that our text view appears over there. If we select this drop, our image view is highlighted on the right hand side. For those of you who are more curious about what you can do here, go to developer.android.com, go to this tools link here and notice that all the tools are covered in detail including all the aspects of the Android monitor. So coming back to our Android Studio app now we need to query the database. For that we need a realm object. Inside activity underscore main I have not created a realm object yet and I'm going to create one right now by saying realm m realm over here. Now I would like to keep this as an instance variable because we are going to use that in several different methods as we go further. I'll just say import class here and realm is available. Now initializing is similar to what we did in dialog add. We say realm.get default instance but it must be set first if you remember from the dialog add class where we created a realm configuration and did all this stuff. But guess what? We don't have to do this every time. We can make our own application class and do this stuff once inside that application class and then it would apply everywhere. So let's go ahead and do that. The first step would be to go here to our project here, say new Java class, call it app bucket drops, click OK. Make sure that it extends from android.app.application, override the method which is called on create over here. Now this method is first called when Android decides to run your app. So inside this method, we are going to run the configuration. Now remember that unlike an activity, the application is never going to be destroyed unless Android decides to do something about it. So let's go back to activity main and cut the code. In fact, in fact, it's in dialog add here. Let's cut this code and put it inside your application class, which is app bucket drops. And we import the necessary stuff and notice that here there is an error it says get activity now we needed a context inside the builder class if you remember the application class itself extends is a subclass of context indirectly so let's just pass this over here and that takes care of the context requirement now all we have to do is go to our manifest and register or tell android that look our application class is custom made and this is what you should know about so here i'm just going to use this name attribute to give the name of our application class it automatically appears in the suggestion when i put a dot and just say app bucket drops over here so now i can go to dialog add i don't need that code anymore over there and I can go to activity main, I can directly create the realm instance. So making a query in realm is pretty simple. All we have to do is mrealm.where, we need to select the class, which in our case would be drop.class over here, dot find all. Notice that there are several variations of this method. Find all is going to find everything on the main thread. There is an async version of that. There is find all sorted where you can specify the name of a field on the basis of which you should sort. We'll be using this one later when our date picker is all set and running. And there is an async version of that as well. So there is other than that you can just find one item using the find first and that can be found in an asynchronous manner as well so we'll use find all async because we would like to find everything on the background thread so just hit option return to import the drop class or alt enter and there you go with the class now this is going to give you a realm results object which is a special type of array list capable of managing data from the realm database now everything is obvious at this point the data source inside our adapter drops should be a realm results object instead of a simple array list so let's go ahead and make that change so there's our array list replaced with the realm results now there is no empty constructor at the time of shooting this video for a realm results which means you cannot initialize it. Now our adapter drops must accept this data and be able to set it. So I'm going to say realm results of drop here and say results and assign that to m results over here or m items. In fact, let's name it to m results. Just select this, right click, refactor, rename, 
and simply call it m results and hit return or enter on your keyboard and here i'll simply say m results equals to results over there so inside the on bind view holder method we have an error right now it says cannot find this method like this so set text basically expects a string and you're giving it a drop object so let's say m results dot get over here notice that it returns a drop just pass the position to this and it will give you a drop object now you can use that drop object and get data out of it by saying drop dot get what and this is going to give you the goal that you set in the what part so everything looks good inside our adapter drops except for one little change here that is the get item count method now this should return the number of items we have inside the results which would be m results dot size in this case now we can go back to activity main and we can fix this error where it says pass the results object so we can just pass the results over here and it all looks good let's try to run the app and see what would happen so when you run the app this is what you see you have the items that are present here and there is no interaction i click back i go back there is no animation of any sort and the items are just there if i click on the dialog and let's say i add something and click add it notice that there is no change on the screen at all the item must update over here if it is a good app right so let's click back go to the bucket drops app once again and notice that this time we have the gift day present over here so first of all you got lucky that the items are even being displayed this is an asynchronous query and you're supposed to listen for it as to when it got completed now if you go to realm.io you will notice that in the asynchronous query section they talk about using a realm change listener which is triggered when the query is complete now notice how they add the listener in the on start method and remove it in the on stop listener so that's exactly what i do i go here and add our realm change listener put a log statement inside so that we can know when on changed was called notice that i have made realm results now an instance variable m results so everything else is the same i query everything store that into m results inside on create and inside the on start method i add a change listener which i remove inside the on stop method now let's take a look at what happens in the log cat when i start the app and start displaying stuff i'm going to go back in the app and start once again notice that on changed is called immediately now we are not doing anything inside on change currently that's a different story let's try to add a drop by clicking add a drop here and i'm going to simply say something here and let's click add it now observe carefully what happens in the log cat when i click add over here on change is called once again so on change is not just specific to loading something asynchronously in fact as long as you're registered to the listener and something is changing in your database the on change method is going to be called continuously but the adapter here does not display the new item take a look at that we have to head back go out come back in the app and then only we see the fourth item and on change is triggered meanwhile once again because we started the app once again so how do we fix this problem very simple we update the adapter inside the on change method that way every time something changes in the database the adapter will always have the latest change reflected without you having to worry about anything so let's go to the adapter drops and add a method that is called update so notice that inside this update method all i do is take a realm results and simply set it over here which i'm already doing over here so let's remove this and call update over here and pass the results that we get in the parameter of the adapter now all we have to do is go back to activity main and take our adapter inside on change by saying m adapter wait a second the adapter is not here we need to create that as well as an instance variable right now it is being created i believe without an object over here let's go and fix that at the top so now at the top i have adapter drops m adapter instance variable 
which I simply initialize in two steps by first creating it and then setting it. So we can go to on change now and say m adapter dot update and we can pass m results because it automatically contains the latest results. Now this is mentioned in realm documentation as well as the auto refresh slide which we discussed in the earlier videos on realm. So go ahead and click update over there. Now let's try to run this and see what would happen. There's the app running. I click add a drop and say something over there click add it notice that that change is not reflected here at all even though on changed was called the reason for this is the data has changed in the database but your adapter hasn't been told about it the way you tell your adapter is to call a method called notify dataset changed you go inside the adapter drops update method and you simply write notify dataset changed now if you run this, let's take a look at what would happen. So now I click on add a drop when the app runs and simply add something, click add it. Immediately that item change is reflected in the UI and that was all because of this single method. Now if you want to know more about this method, you can go to Google and type Android Recycler View Adapter because it is contained inside this class. There are two types of changes. Either you can have say new year change to Christmas in the first position. Now that doesn't really change the structure of the items, does it? So that would be an item change, but structural change would be when you add something or delete something or move or drag something within the recycler view. Now, based on what you're doing, they are asking you to use specific methods. Unfortunately, we can't use specific methods with realm because of the simple fact that Realm databases are not in particular order. The data is just existing out there, unlike SQL, where you can say row number one corresponds to something in the database in Realm. Whatever you see in the form of row numbers or column numbers in the Realm browser is simply to make your understanding easier. The data is unordered, which means you need to call notify data set change to avoid inconsistency exceptions in the recycler view. So in this video, I have shown you how to display data from Realm inside the recycler view. Now all the code is available on GitHub forward slash slide node forward slash bucket drops. Especially check the section called branches here where each branch corresponds to the code that I wrote in a particular video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a nice day.